In this section, we are going to talk about uh, carrier aggregation, which is also known as CA uh, in literature. And you will see how LT Advanced implements uh, CA. So LTE releases 8, 9 uh, specified system bandwidths of uh, 1.4, uh, 3, 5, 10, 15 and 20 megahertz to meet different spectrum and deployment requirements. However, uh, to support higher uh, bandwidth LTE deployments, uh, which was one of the top goals of IMT Advanced, uh, we had to use some sort of a technique where we could combine multiple chunks of spectrum to deliver uh, those kind of throughputs that we would look at about like one gigabit per second or 300 megabits per second. Um, so the way one way of doing that is by using carrier aggregation. So carrier aggregation involves using multiple LT carriers in conjunction to deliver faster peak throughputs uh, both in the uplink and downlink. You can have two flavors. Um, of CA, you can have either an uplink CA or you can have a do downlink CA. Uh, carrier aggregation was first introduced in LTE release 10. So it was one of the uh, very important features of release 10 and up to uh, 100 megahertz of LTE carrier bandwidth was supported in release 10, which translates to having a maximum of five 20 megahertz LTE carriers. So as expected, implementation of CA posed many challenges to both vendors and network operators because now we have to have multiple LT carriers serving the same user. There are, uh, uh, there are some key challenges um, that need to be taken care of in terms of timing, uh, scheduling uh, that uh, uh, were not present when you had only one LT carrier per, uh, for a given user. So, uh, some of the challenges that were, you know, uh, faced by vendors and network operators were uh, load balancing between LT carriers. Say, say now you have multiple carriers. How do you load balance your traffic so that no one carrier becomes uh, overly loaded? Uh, there were challenges on filter design on UE front ends because now UEs had to, in a sense, uh, tune to more than one carrier. So there were uh, challenges. Uh, depending on how far those uh, different carriers are apart in frequency domain uh, because the filter design uh, is very crucial for a good UE performance. Uh, then we had a challenge around varying RF characteristic between LT carriers belonging to different LT bands. So uh, as you know, there are a variety of LT bands uh, defined in 3GPP and uh, those bands can happen uh, to fall in different frequency ranges. They can either be low frequency or high frequency. And the RF characteristics between those uh, uh, frequency carriers may be different. So uh, we had to uh, design the network to be able to handle the differences in RF characteristics. Typically, uh, low frequency carriers are able to propagate a lot further, um, uh, whereas um, uh, the high frequency, there is uh, more multipath compared to low. So there are some challenges that are associated with uh, combining um, uh, frequency carriers across multiple bands. In LT Advanced, uh, each LT carrier that is assigned to a user is called a component carrier or a CC. We will uh, hear this term quite often, uh, CC or component carrier. A component carrier can either be a primary or a secondary. Um, and we will understand what a primary and a secondary are in just a little bit. So uh, primary, think of the primary as the main connection uh, LD carrier to a UE and a secondary is a, is a component carrier that can go on and off depending uh, on the user demand. Each component carrier can either be uplink, downlink, or downlink only. There is, uh, uh, for obvious reasons, we can't have uplink only um, uh, component carrier because uh, the, 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 it makes no sense, right? Uh, because all, all your allocations uh, for uh, resource happen 
need to happen uh, on our on the downlink so uh, you need to be you need to you can't have an uplink only ca in a sense uh, carrier aggregation again can be of uh, multiple types you can have actually uh, three categories uh, let's look at them one at a time so here on the x axis is what we have frequency her domain so you can have uh, the, say you have frequency band a and you have frequency band b now you can have uh, two component carriers that are right against each other and they are in the same frequency band uh, this scenario is called uh, intra band contiguous carrier aggregation um, because they are right next to each other now you can have a scenario where both your component carriers are in the same frequency band but are not against each other um, exactly in that case you can uh, this is called an intra band non contiguous carrier aggregation and then there exists a third scenario uh, where you can have two frequency bands which uh, fall uh, differently on the frequency domain and you can have component carriers uh, spread across these frequency bands so you have one here um, and the other one here and you may want to do carry aggregation so this is called interband because now we have more than one band uh, non-contiguous because they are not against each other uh, carrier aggregation in cases of ca um, each ue has a serving cell uh, that provides all necessary control information and functions to the ue such as nas mobility security and rrc and this cell is called as the primary serving cell and is abbreviated as p cell so the primary cell is the cell that the ue is pretty much always connected to and that primary cell is responsible for giving all the control information functions uh, to that ue uh, the data can go over primary cell in addition to the secondary cell uh, but the primary is sort of like uh, you know is a always their connectivity each of the additional cells for the new component carrier are referred to as s cells or secondary cells uh, there can be more than one s cell uh, for cases where you are doing uh, more than uh, two CA, so you can have more than one uh, S cell. However, there can only be one P cell. Uh, you can ha you can't have more than one P cell. Your primary cell is always limited to one. Uh, and we will add a lot more detail uh, regarding P cell and S cells in the next slide. So let's uh, talk a little more about the primary and secondary cells so that we get a better understanding. Uh, primary cell or the primary serving cell handles all the RRC connection, uh, reestablishment and establishment procedures. Uh, it is also abbreviated as PCC, which is a primary component carrier. Um, and you can have uplink and downlink component carriers corresponding to a P cell. The secondary cell is configured after connection establishment to the primary cell to provide additional resources and the secondary component carrier or scc uh, can we we can uh, have uplink and downlink uh, component carriers corresponding to the s cell so remember s cell if you uh, from the previous slides uh, the s cell can be a downlink or can be downlink and uplink but can never be an uplink only SL. Uh, now the primary cell or the P cell uh, is where all the physical downlink uh, control channel is uh, is transmitted along with the physical downlink shared channel which is all your user data. Um, uh, all your physical uplink shared channel data is uh, transmitted uh, on the P cell. Uh, and along with your PUCCH, all the control information in the uplink. Uh, measurement and mobility procedures uh, are based on the P cell. So uh, all the handovers um, are based on the signal strength 
uh, RSRP or RSRQ depending on what you have implemented in your network uh, but all that is done on the basis of P cell or the primary cell random access procedure or the RATCH is uh, performed on the primary cell first uh, after the, the um, uh, we have a dedicated uh, SRB uh, DRB with the primary cell is when uh, in case of additional resources are needed we would get a SL but uh, the the RATCH is always performed on the P cell first the primary cell uh, as I had mentioned before is always on in a sense there is always connectivity as long as you are in a RRC connected state so therefore we say that it cannot be deactivated um, uh, what that means is we always have as long as we are in a RRC connected state we would always have a connection to the primary cell uh, the downlink p cell and the uplink p cell are linked um, by uh, sib2 so we have a corresponding uh, mapping from a downlink to an uplink based on the uh, sib uh, which has all the erfc and information uh, so now let's talk about the secondary cell the secondary cell is uh, a cell where we can transmit uh, physical downlink control channel information we can transmit uh, physical downlink uh, shared channel all the user data and we can also transmit physical uplink shared channel so uplink lt data can be transferred but we never transmit a physical control channel information in over a SL, it always goes through the, to the P cell for obvious reasons because uh, the uh, we uh, the, uh, the SL can actually get activated and deactivated, so it may not be always there. So you know, and this control information is crucial for system operation. Therefore, we only send it over P cell. Uh, MAC layer activation and deactivation is performed uh, for the SL. And this happens uh, depending on the user demand, uh, uh, the secondary cell can be turned up and down. And there are thresholds in the system that define how often uh, you want to activate and deactivate uh, these uh, secondary cells. Now, there is an important concept that can also happen uh, in carrier aggregation, and that is called cross scheduling, uh, which we will look at in the next slide in a lot more detail. So we had briefly mentioned about uh, about uh, cross scheduling. So let's look at uh, uh, how cross scheduling works in uh, carrier aggregation. So cross scheduling was primarily developed to support heterogeneous networks uh, comprising a combination of macro E node Bs and low power nodes, example Pico cell, Femto cell, and uh, remote radio heads or RRHs where significant intercell interference may arise when those networks are deployed on the same frequency so i'll give you some background here so one of the main targets of lt advanced is delivering high throughputs and increasing uh, the spectral efficiency and one of the tools in the tool bag to do this is by deploying heterogeneous networks uh, these are networks that are a combination of macro E node Bs, your full fledged base stations, and also low power E node Bs. But since uh, there is only limited spectrum available uh, to the network operators, they may want to deploy these at the same frequency. Uh, if they do do, if they do deploy them on the same frequency, there is bound to be significant uh, intercell interference between uh, the low power nodes and the high power nodes so the cross scheduling is defined as a means of overcoming some of the interference disadvantages and the way we do that is um, we will understand that uh, in these pictures uh, at the bottom but before we get to that let's uh, let's uh, uh, let's understand uh, more about pdcch so the physical downlink control channel if you remember is transmitted across the entire bandwidth of the respective carrier interference coordinations based on frequency reuse may not be adequate to prevent interference 
So yeah, let's let's look at this picture here where there is no cross care uh, carrier scheduling. So imagine you have two LT carriers. You have this LT carrier here in this color, which is uh, kind of like uh, the bluish, and then you have this reddish uh, LT carrier. And uh, we are talking about uh, a downlink operation. So without cross care scheduling, you have uh, a controlled region that spans usually um, uh, the zero one or two the first one of the first three OFDM symbols um, in a in a in a subframe uh, and um, y you can have um, you can have depending on your system capacity you can uh, decide to choose how many OFDM symbols you want to use uh, for um, control information but within that control information what you do provide the UE are some uplink uh, assignments for resource allocation so for in this scenario say uh, you have uh, some control information telling a UE that hey uh, for your uplink transmission go use this chunk of spectrum so this is downlink this is uplink uh, whereas um, uh, you can uh, you can even tell uh, for a given UE that for a downlink operation this is uh, the downlink uh, uh, PRB set where they can expect to receive data. So you will have the similar across different uh, component carriers. So in this component carrier, this is your distribution. Whereas in the second, you have um, control uh, symbols pointing to different chunks of uh, spectrum for uplink and downlink for resource allocation. Now with cross carrier scheduling, only one component carrier needs to be protected and it can be used to allocate resources on other component carriers, thereby reducing interference. So now since each of these carriers is on the same frequency, uh, in case of heterogeneous networks, we will definitely see interference uh, on the control region. And we, our aim is to protect the control region as much as possible for interference because that's the first uh, uh, data that a UE has to decode because only then would it know what uh, what um, and where can the UE either expect to receive data uh, which would be in the downlink or uh, where it can send the data in uplink uh, all the assignments uh, are done in the control channel so uh, protecting the control channel is very crucial so cross care carrier scheduling actually helps us do that. So in this in the same uh, two frequency um, or two cell with the same frequency deployment, we have one uh, frequency carrier here where we have the same frequency carrier here. And now what you can do is use only one carrier's control region to allocate resources uh, across uh, both. Um, carriers and what that does is you have actually gotten rid of all the transmissions on this control region uh, from your uh, in a head net scenario therefore this region uh, you have essentially removed all the interference uh, and a ue can come in and decode here uh, decode the control region and it will know oh okay i have to transmit uh, on this region here on um, on a given frequency and then it can also decode uh, that okay for the second cell my frequency allocation for uplink is this so using one uh, frequency carrier you are able to uh, provide resource assignments to all the UEs so I hope cross uh, scheduling uh, is a little clear to you there is some dependency on uh, support uh, from the UE side uh, for cross uh, carrier scheduling, but pretty much all LT advanced UEs support um, uh, cross scheduling.